Purely Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft-related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. So, we're going to talk about positivity and this concept of having a positive outlook. Um, I want to differentiate right off the bat about positivity. I am not talking about that fake surface level positivity, light and love thing that we see a lot of people in that new age category sort of present. Um, I am not talking about that at all because that drives me up the wall. Um, I, I, I can't do the fake positivity. And I understand the concept of faking it till you make it. On some level, I can agree with that, but that's different. That type of positivity is performative. If it's important that you appear to be positive, that people perceive you as a positive person, if that's sort of where your head's at, then you're you're in that mix of people I'm talking about. Sorry, but you are. <laughs> um, to be perceived as this way, it's more about you having a positive outlook. So it's coming from within and you looking out. So at your core, you tend to be a little bit more optimistic or you're intentionally trying to be more optimistic. You can easily be more pessimistic about everything, but you're making an intentional choice to look for options, to look for things that could work out, you know, to problem solve, we'll say. Uh, with the intention of there being some sort of positive outcome. So that's having a positive outlook, right? So how do, how do you do that? Um, I think it's important as practitioners to have realistic expectations. Um, and this seems like a no brainer, but like sparks are not gonna shoot out your hand when you do magic. Um, sometimes when we do spells, it doesn't happen in the timing that you like and you gotta be okay with that. And guess what? Sometimes your spells might not work at all and it might not have anything to do with you doing something wrong or not manifesting enough or not believing or setting your intentions the right way or using the wrong color, herb, or potion. It might not even be about that. There are, I talk about this uh, and I wanna just bring this up again. There are things, there are other forces, there's other energy that can be counter to what you were doing. And it, it doesn't mean a single person bumping up against government, courts, you know, systems, we'll say systems. Um, it can very, be very difficult. And I do, I do think there are some workarounds, but when you're in a space of trying to have a positive outlook, um, it's important that you're realistic about what's really happening, you know, and like set your sights a little lower for, to be honest, not indefinitely, but just long enough for you to experience wins. And then you can begin to feel positive again. It is very difficult to keep taking L's and having a positive outlook. That's where I'm going with this. It is hard to continue, as trust me, as someone who is getting older, it is very difficult to keep taking an L. It, it gets to you after a while, I'm gonna just say that. So with that being said, trust me on this, set small manageable goals, and then lead back up to the big stuff. Because if you keep hitting, getting hit with these disappointments, some of us, it scars you permanently. Could it be undone? Yes, but people don't want to do the work to undo it. So they just have this negative outlook, sort of indefinitely. I mean, come on, you've met older people and there was nothing wrong with them. They just were mean and they just had this net. And listen, life probably treated them unkindly. So that's why they got there. Set those small wins, those small goals before you build up to the bigger thing. Being flexible about it. Have a magical routine. Um... Again, in the same goal setting thing, small things, do a blessing on your tea in the morning or coffee or your, your water that, you know, bless it. Say something positive, some affirmations over it. Make that a common thing. Something before you go to bed, a prayer if you're going to do a prayer. Uh, just words of affirmation, words of power, you know, charged poems, something you found, an excerpt from something, a song. And as you read that, you know, you've charmed it with the, the per you use that as a charm because every time you say it, it's supposed to bring maybe a sense of peace or, or joy or just positivity over you. 
Um, so you wanna create that type of routine. And then journaling. I know everybody doesn't wanna journal. Sometimes I don't, I skip weeks and, and honestly I've gone at least a month or so without journaling, even though that was supposedly part of my routine, but life. But here's the thing, when I get to that point, I become very aware that I'm not journaling because I realize I think I need to empty this. A brain dump, just writing it out. It doesn't have to make sense. You might not ever read it again, but kind of just write. It might be incoherent to anybody else, but just write what you feel. It's not. You don't have to tell a story, but just get it out of you. Um, and let's talk about mental alchemy, because I think that actually, I kind of saving the best for last with that. Mental alchemy has served me well in the practice of it. And I, it, here's the thing, you're going to want to take it seriously, because when things are getting very serious, that could be your way to have that positive outlook I'm talking about. What am I doing? Positive outlook. <laughs> um, mental alchemy. So one of the great examples I've ever heard about using mental alchemy is a car crash. So you're driving along, your car is told you know, you're in a crash. You're fine, but the car is crashed. So let's talk about it. Were you in a market? Did you really want a new car? Um, you didn't want it like this. We get that. But did you want a new car? Were you hoping, had you been kind of eyeballing, lusting a little bit over this new car, this type of situation? Um, or, you know, uh, did your car require pricing repair work or something like that? Um, if not, and you was overall happy with your car and you just have a car accident, the point is when you're looking at this situation, depending on which example I just gave you are, um, you can really spin it, honestly. That's the mental alchemy. And you can find the silver lining somewhere in the situation. So working backwards, if I was the person who I was per perfectly fine with my car, I wasn't in the market for a new car and I was fine having this car. Well, you know what? That If I'm that person, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe there's something out there that's going to actually make me feel something, give spark some joy in me. Um, you know, something I find pleasurable to drive. And, you know, this was maybe getting a little too humdrum, a little too boring, and I needed to shake things up. So this is a great opportunity for me to explore this. So what else can I get now? Maybe I was tired of driving an SUV and I want to drive a small car or vice versa. Maybe it's time for a truck. I don't know. Maybe, you know, you've been driving your car and it's older and now you get a car with all these bells and whistles. So you start to think about that sort of stuff, right? And you find the positive in it. That's mental alchemy in a nutshell. <laughs> it's a lot more to it, but that's where you start. It's the thinking, thinking differently. Find, you know, if, if it's not this, then maybe it's this and else is that type thinking. Same thing if you were in a market for a new car. Bam, well, here's your opportunity. Um, you know, that's that would be my first thought. Okay, so let me start looking for cars. Is the car total? You're almost crossing your fingers. That, and nowadays, most cars, when you get an accident, they total them out. So well, nine times out of 10, it will be totaled. So there you go. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is something I've been talking about with, with my um, coven. We've all been talking about this is romanticizing your life. You probably have heard of this. Romanticizing your life does on some degree require your imagination. It requires you imagining things, but what part of witchcraft doesn't? Um, imagining things. Yes, knowing, but imagining. So one of the things that I did, I had a try, I, you know, I'm back home. I was traveling or I had traveled and I'd been gone for two weeks. Um, and I was out of state visiting um, one of my other children. So I'm visiting him and I'm helping my son because he had a medical procedure. So I was there with him and um, I knew it was going to be a rough situation getting there. I had to wake up at a ridiculous, like four, I had to leave out the house at a four o'clock hour, 4 a.m. to get to the airport and uh, I would be traveling. I had a layover that was for three hours in a state. I don't know, you know, anything or anybody. And then um, I knew I was going to be getting on a small plane to get to my next, the final destination that I was going to. Why did I use the word final destination? To get to where I was finally going to land, be, right, with my son. The problem, I don't like small planes at all. And it's not just a thing of me getting afraid. Like, I feel if there's any turbulence, just slight the wind. It, it, mm, 
I could get sick very easily um, on those flights. So that's one of the reasons I do not like small uh, planes, but I knew this was going to be my situation. So I decided to become this made up character that I made up on the fly. And this character was someone who just walked around at the time. This is my flight out who she just, I don't know, everything was just this really exciting thing. And she spoke to people and, you know, she was just friendly and everything was kind of funny. And, you know, I just kind of, it just clicked for me when I, once um, I got into the airport, I didn't come into it immediately, but I just, I kind of took on this persona, you know, this character I was making up that was just like this character of a person who just was kind of on the positive side and kind of naive. Um, and I just proceeded to stay in that space my entire travel. Um, that was easy, actually. Once uh, The longer I kept doing it, it was just easy. And then the airport, for instance, that I was in, once I had that outlook, I was like, wow, there's a lot of cool stuff to eat here. Places to, I can eat or um, places I can, you know, there were stores that I was actually interested in. So I had, all of a sudden, I noticed that I, I could fill my time, you know, hanging out and looking around. And then I realized, you know, I'm kind of tired and I wanted to sit down and I found a seat and I thought it was really comfortable. And um, I had all my devices and I had something good to watch. Like for, because I chose to be in that mindset, nothing else really got to me. And then when it was time to get on that small plane, by the way, um, it wasn't so bad because I became all of a sudden very aware of the people around me. And then, you know, this character I've been, you know, playing for that whole day, uh, she was very curious about the people around her. And she makes up stories about people. So I'm sitting up there and I'm seeing a whole family together. I begin to concoct whole ideas about, well, where are they going and why? <laughs> and why is the whole family, including the toddlers, going? What are they getting into? And why? There's so many different generations in this family. And I just began to, to fill in the blanks on what was happening with that. And, um, you know, I remember taking a nap. Next thing you know, I was at my destination that experience of just sort of and for me romanticizing aspects of the mundane in my life really just means honestly kind of playing a character it's not faking it because it's not necessarily me but the me that's carrying all of this in her imagination and navigating the real life world at the same time um i kind of get to relax and kind of just like be autopilot and i let this persona take over um, until it no longer serves, you know, my purpose and what I'm doing. And that's been beneficial for me, uh, doing so. It's not that I'm f like, I'm not, you know, changing my voice and acting like a totally different person. It's the persona, the characteristics of this character I'm imagining. And you can do this with a character, a TV character, a movie character, and you can, you know, especially if you watched enough and you believe this is how that character would behave in you, you know, as you, in these everyday life experiences. Letting your consciousness work a little differently by taking on a persona or character or something you identify with that can handle more obstacles and issues and problems. Yeah, do that. And do that until it serves, you know, as much as it serves you. Um, practice, you know, give it a try. But these are ways that are probably, I don't hear talked about enough on being the practitioner, the witch with a positive outlook. And I'm speaking specifically from that one, I am a witch. And two, because I think we're unique when we have these conversations about having a negative outlook, because as witches, you're full, well, you should be aware of that, um, how you kind your lens that you look out through the world um, affects everything you're trying to do, you know, in the metaphysical world and so forth, you know, as above, so below. Um, so you gotta be, you, you gotta care. <laughs> you gotta care. Um, you can't just assume that it, it won't have any impact on spell work you've done or ongoing spell work. You know, those things that you, those big dreams, those manifesting um, intentions that you put out for that previous new moon and so forth, you know, that, that, that ongoing work, you know, when you set healing energy to someone you cared about, 
yeah, that uh, negative outlook influences. It's a signature. It's part of everything that you're sending out. So that's why you might want to care. That's why this matters. Um, but that's all I'll say about that. But um, yeah, so that was it. I tried to stay on my notes um, with this sort of stuff. But you know, I do struggle with that. But I, you know, I like these practical conversations about witchcraft and kind of navigating real life as a witch. Um, and I've been practicing for some time now. So I think these are good conversations to have. I mean, you can learn about the casting spells and the rituals and all that sort of stuff. And I love talking about that and sharing that stuff too. Um, but when things go awry in everyday life, <laughs> how do you still manage all that sort of stuff, right? Um, because you don't want it to consume you. So that's where, you know, all the things I suggest to come into play. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, please do not forget to hit like, subscribe, share. Also, if you have not considered, please consider hitting that join button for Leap Taken membership. It's a nice thing to do, it's supportive, and also there are perks that come along with it. And go ahead and head over to leaptaken.com. Check out the services that I offer. Um, I have a mentoring program. I have a monthly service as well for a unique type of reading that you get using tarot oracle cards that uh, correspond with uh, the moon phases. Also, um, I have an Ask a Witch um, service as well where there's not a lot of commitment. You just ask. And of course, my readings as well. Um, to sort of help you with whatever is going on. But yeah, check it out and more things to come. So thanks again for watching. All right, I'm done. Bye. <laughs>